In recent years, if you wanted an off-road ready third gen Tacoma from the factory, you'd either have to shoot for a TRD off-road or even a real expensive TRD Pro. Toyota's solution was this, the 2022 Tacoma Trail Edition. Today we're at Peters Mill Run in Virginia. It's not that challenging of a trail, especially for a Tacoma, but it should be able to show the abilities and disabilities of both of these two trucks. On my right is the 2022 Toyota Tacoma SR5 Trail Edition. This is new for 2022. It's based off of an SR5, but you do get some goodies like the TRD heritage style grille. It's an inch taller, which you notice it when you're driving it. You get these all-terrain tires, which are all terrains with bronze wheels and most importantly you get a rear locker and the msrp for an sr5 trail is right around forty four thousand dollars and on my left is my buddy matt's forerunner it's a 2013 limited these don't have rear lockers only the limiteds don't the trail editions of this time and the trd off-roads and pros in the later years have rear lockers these just have a track which is one of the best off-road traction control systems on the market today. So this Tacoma has the more powerful and the more commonly found engine option between these two. In the base SR, two-wheel drive, you can only get the 2.7 liter four-cylinder, but these have the V6 under this huge oh, heavy hood. This is the 2GR. FKS, I feel short. It's a 3.5 liter V6, but you'll find this in literally every V6 powered Toyota that isn't a truck. But it makes 278 horsepower and 265 pound feet of torque. You can either choose a six speed manual or a six speed automatic like this one. I would probably prefer the manual, especially off road. As for MPGs, of course it's not great because it's a truck. Toyota advertises 18 in the city. 22 on the highway and a combined rating of 20. For 5th gen 4Runners, most of them will have this powertrain, but only a few of them. Those were only in 2010, an SR5 two-wheel drive could get a 2.7 liter four-cylinder that made 150 horsepower. That's slow because this is heavy, but this has the more favorable and beloved engine. Wow, it has hood struts? That's fancy. But this is the 1GR FE. It's a four liter V6 dual overhead cam, 270 horsepower and 278 pound feet of torque. Healthy numbers, but these are pretty heavy. These only use a five speed automatic. It would be really cool to see a manual fifth gen 4Runner if that's even possible. And as far as MPGs for this one, Toyota advertises 17 in the city, 21 on the highway and 18 combined. Toyota is known for under tiring their trucks. The TRD Pros and the TRD Off-Roads get these same mild all-terrain tires. Even my Tacoma has these tires. They're Goodyear Wranglers, they're not bad. They're impressive for being a normal tire, but they're still more street oriented, I'd say. You do get these cool looking bronze wheels, which I'd actually like to see on mine. Now this 4Runner is also bone stock. Because it's a limited, it's riding on 20s, which look nice in Beverly Hills and Potomac, Maryland, but not on a trail like this, because they could get scratched up on a rock or something, and it also limits the amount of sidewall that you could put on them. Toyota puts highway rated tires on them, you know, to be more quiet and comfortable, but the tread pattern is not aggressive at all. So we're going to take a bit of a harder line. This is the first obstacle. Right now I'm in four low and we're going to watch this thing crawl up this. So I'm going to be going down here, this hole. Look at how it just crawls up it. The only thing I'm figuring out is modulating the throttle. But it's hilarious because my XC90, <laughs> I took it up this same hill uh, last year and this, it struggled. I mean, granted it was raining. We can see how it just crawls up shit. Nice. Yeah, just keep your foot in it. I don't know, you could have made it up that. Just go straight. 
steady throttle. You know, honestly, I if you want to be safe, actually you keep going, keep going, you're good. This is clearly not that challenging and you'll see this here, but I also wanted to demonstrate how it just crawls up things. And this is something that I really love with my truck because you have the height to take obstacles. Yeah, four low makes a big difference with like the throttle. It's so much better. This is the one I took with the Volvo, which uh, I think I might need my rear locker. So. I, I wanna try and hit the center too if it's more challenging. Good. So, we are soon oh, seeing, yeah. So I'm gonna use my rear locker for the first time. Okay, so the rear locker is engaged. Now I'm gonna go. Look at how it just crawls up it. Nice. So what I think I'm gonna do for you is I'm gonna spot you. So we're gonna use A-Track in the Forerunner. Right, it says it's on. Okay, so what you're gonna have to do for A-Track is just, it's gonna spin, but just keep your foot in it and it'll claw up. Try to keep a consistent RPM though, right? Yeah, so just hold the throttle steady. Yep, start moving up. Now straighten out. Okay, that's good. Keep on it. Beautiful. So you can see how A-Track clamps onto the brakes. Weird inside. The whole car is rattling. I just wanted to demonstrate. This is exactly where my XC90 struggled. How low range and flex just makes it look really easy. You can see how it is on the taco. Now I'll pull up so we can see the Forerunner. But these both just crawl over anything. That's why I love these so much. And the Forerunner is great because it has a track. Because even with those street tires, it's still gripping pretty well. There is a Jeep coming. From behind? From up ahead. So this is part of the fun of the trail. There's that Wrangler going up right now. Uh, we <laughs> had to back up pretty far down it. You know, I wanted to talk about how this thing takes these bumps. It takes them very well, especially if you're coming from a more crossover oriented SUV. Well, all wheel drive road oriented SUV. And the Forerunner back there behind me is like the perfect middle ground, it seems, for, you know, between a full on truck and something like an Outback. This isn't much of a difficult obstacle in this, but the hood makes it hard to see where I'm actually putting my wheel. So it's hard to see the line that I'm trying to take, but I'm in four low, just riding the brake. This does not have downhill assist. It doesn't have an inclino inclinometer either, but I don't need that because like, I'm used to, <laughs> I'm used to off-roading a 25-year-old Tacoma, you know, that has nothing. I just can't see with the hood, but I think I'll be all right. Yeah, there's nothing really, like, there's nowhere to fall down. You're taking a good line. That thing looks cool. It's always such a treat being able to go into the wilderness like this. But Peter's Mill, if you are new to it, the first half is a lot rockier than the second half, which <laughs> after a while, the rocks kind of get old, but it's nice in a truck like this or a truck like the Forerunner. Yeah, you, I'm getting thrown around, but it's not that bad. Let me try to not hit the camera. Okay. Yeah, doing great. And the Forerunner is making slight work too. I'm just very impressed with the street tires that it's running, how well it's doing. 
The Tacoma has a pretty bare bones and straightforward four wheel drive system. You have a part time four wheel drive system with the option of four high and four low. But because this is a trail edition, you have that rear locker. Before you could only get that on a TRD off road or a TRD pro. On the contrary, these Forerunners, especially the Limiteds, are a little bit more complicated to more, I guess, traditional off-roaders. The Limited, like this one, has a full-time four-wheel drive system, and by default, it sends 40% of power to the front and 60 to the rear. If you lock the center diff, it's 50-50, front and rear, and you have the option of four low as well, which is very useful for slow crawling situations. But like I said earlier, this does not have a rear locker like the Trail Edition or the TRD Off-Road or TRD Pro 4Runners, but every four-wheel drive 4Runner has a track, which doesn't replace a locker, but it does just as good in certain situations. Quickly about a track. I don't know the actual like what a track stands for. I think active traction control, but it works very well. They started putting out a track in fourth gen forerunners and the Land Cruiser 100 series works really well and Toyota keeps adapting it and improving it. In the new ones, it's virtually silent. In these, you can hear the brakes clamping on the spinning wheels. So it's like, cock, cock, cock. I'm going to try this. I'm gonna put my rear locker on just to be safe. So rear, yeah, rear locker is on just to be safe. And if I hold this line here, it has enough clearance to just walk up it. You can just see how it crawls up. And I think it's flexing a bit right now. The flex on this is very impressive. And just watching it, like I can easily modulate the throttle and it just crawls right up. So the line for this one that I want to take, um, I mean, it's pretty, thing is like, it's pretty self-explanatory. The wheels will just go where you know, everything else. So I should, like looking at it from down there, it's more scary. Mm -hmm. But looking at it here, I should be chilling. So. Okay. Yep. Oh, that? I think I should be chilling. Oh. It's flexing a lot. Oh, yeah. I be teetering. There we go. Very good. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Wow, look at that. I know, it's crazy. This thing is, yeah, it's impressive. This thing is really good. Oof. The forerunner is going to tackle it. You're straight. Beautiful. That's okay. That's a skid plate. Wow. Look at that flex. I'd go driver. Okay, now you're good straight up. Is a track on? No. I'd turn it on. There you go. So you can see how a track just claws its way up. 
really impressive, seriously. I know. For a stock SUV like this with highway tires, I'll tell you when to start turning passenger just a little bit. Now. Just a little bit. Okay, now straight. Now I'd start turning just very slow, very slow. So now I'd start to turn driver. You're good, you're good, you're good, you're good. Sketchy. Just very slow. Turn driver, 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 driver. Yep, yep, yep. Keep on. Very good. Now you're good. You cleared it. You cleared it. Perfect. Woo! I know, it's sketchy. So actually turn passenger just a bit because you want your passenger wheel to kind of be up on that little hill. So pull up. Okay, now straighten out. I'd actually turn passenger just a little bit more. Now come. Okay, now straighten out. Beautiful. Muy bueno. I know it's sketchy. Yeah. Like in that situation, when like this wheel is the one that's coming down and that side, the other corner is coming up, you turn into it. So if it was gonna like slide. So you want the wheel that's on the ground, you wanna try into that wheel. Yeah. You, cause like if you turn driver, like if you turn passenger, it would just like fall over like that. Oh, okay. But it, to prevent it from rolling, you know, like you see this, it'll just like fall. But if it's this way, kind of goes like that. I'm gonna take a more difficult line. Like this. Yeah. We'll be able to see how it flexes. Like this. Yeah? Any flex? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Look at that flex. It's funny how much these things bind in four-wheel drive. Now, Matt is gonna do it with the forerunner. Yep, now straight. Uh, come passenger just a bit. Okay, straight. And then just slowly go down. Very slow, yep. Now, you're gonna go over a rock now. Yeah, you're good, uh-huh. Now, so okay, so now she's flexing real good. You want, yeah, I'll take a picture. It looks cool, so you can just go straight. You can turn right now too. So we're just eating lunch, but I wanted to quickly say, the Peach Sour Patch Kids are really good, but I wanted to talk about suspension. Now, because these are Toyotas and, because these are Toyotas and because they're off-roady Toyotas, there's plenty of aftermarket for the Tacomas, every generation of Tacoma, because I have a first gen and there's so much for those. For these fifth gen forerunners, they have a few different suspension systems like x rius like this one has, but it stiffens up each side, you know, when you're around corners. So it's more road oriented. Or you could get KDSS, which is like an active sway bar, but it doesn't completely disconnect. That actually reminds me, I wanna talk about recovery points. There's plenty of recovery on both. Like on even this Limited, there's a recovery hook that you could attach a rope to, well, a strap to. There's plenty of recovery in the front. And on these two, there's plenty of recovery points in the back. So thankfully, I'll knock on wood over there. You can knock on wood if you're watching on your computer with wooden desk, but no casualties today. I think it was a successful day of off-roading and I'm glad to bring you guys along and look at how this and this perform. I'm not Doug DeMuro, but before I start rambling too much, I will talk to you in the next video. Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Subscribe for more content with not this exact taco, but 
other Toyotas and other off-roading content and more content with this 4Runner too. But I'll see you in the next video. Bye peeps.